to you right now, because like considering what you do with the whole KDE environment, does the distro to you like matter at all anymore, or is it just like get build whatever the base is? It just it, it is what it is. You know, the distro does matter, um, but it matters for sort of the opposite reason why you might expect. Uh, you might know in KDE we have Neon, of course, and Neon mm -hmm. is like a stable Ubuntu base plus rolling or unstable KDE stuff. Mm -hmm. What I find I need is literally the opposite of that. Okay. I need for everything that's not KDE to be as cutting edge as possible so that I have all the build dependencies I need. But the actual KDE stack could be 10 years old for all I care because I'm just going to build it all from source. Right, right. Um, so that inherently pushes me in the direction of rolling release distros or at least semi-rolling distros. Um, I used to use Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed's very good. Uh, I've never been an Arch guy, but I decided to move to Fedora KDE because I kind of liked the user experience of it a little bit better. Um, while the dependencies that it provided were... Yeah, ninety five percent new enough for what I need. So occasionally I'll need to build something from source for like mm -hmm. a week or two before Fedora ships it, but that's eh, not a big deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I guess that sort of leads into a big topic from recently, which was the whole thing that Neil was pushing for, where dropping the X eleven side on Fedora KDE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing. Where do you stand on that? Because I asked uh, David when I had him on last time. And if I recall, he was like, I, I think he was slightly wary, but not opposed to the idea. Yeah, so in general, I think this is a good fit for Fedora's user base. Mm -hmm. Fedora is a cutting edge distro. They inherently like to push the technology stack forward. And so I think if you are a Fedora user who's in the target demographic, this is something that should make you feel excited, right? This isn't something that should fill you with dread. And if it does, it's probably a sign that Fedora isn't the right distro for you. And I think that's totally fine. Like not everybody needs to use the exact same distro in the world. Um, I think it's a very aggressive plan. I doubt it will end up happening, to be perfectly honest, because the condition for doing this is that we in KDE knock off every single item on our true Wayland Showstoppers wiki page. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, I was looking at it this morning, I think we've got seven items left. And a couple of those are in progress. Um, but to be honest, I would be surprised if we managed to get every single one finished by Plasma 6. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing probably 6.1 or 6.2 will be when we finally get all of those done. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe we'll be super fast and amazing and everything will be done by six. But what Neil has told me mm -hmm. is that if we don't manage to knock all of those out by 6.0, then they're going to defer the idea of shipping without the X11 right. session. Well, yeah, the, the, it's going to happen at some point. Like, it will. I, I would not, like, it, it makes sense that Katie, uh, so that, um, Fedora is the first place it happened. I, it makes more sense that Gnome's the first place that completely drops X11, but <laughs> the first distro that decides to do it optionally, Fedora makes the most sense outside of like, you know, the experimental distros. Because I think the first distro ever to ship Wayland was Rebecca right. Black OS. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Which goes by RBOS right now. So most people just forget what the like full name was. They just use it as like a regular distro, but it's very much one Incredible. of these small niche distros um right yeah but you are right i think fedora kd was the biggest it was the the biggest sort of mainstreamish distro to ship plasma wayland by default yeah, yeah and they did that a few years ago they did that like two or three years ago i think so like fedora is it's in a weird spot because there was this push a couple of years back i don't know if you remember this but a bunch of linux youtubers were pushing it as like this Ubuntu replacement. It's like a really beginner friendly distro. Which I do remember this, yes. Yeah. I didn't get involved with that myself, but Fedora, that's, that's just not what they do. Like, I'm, that's not yeah. to say they're an unstable distro that's not suitable for someone who's new, but their goal isn't to be this consistent, stable base. Fedora yeah. has always been, we sort of push the limits a little bit too early like they started right. they were one of the first distros to do system d one of the first distros yep. to do pulse audio 
probably pipe one of the first to do too, pipe yeah. wire. Pipe <laughs> wire wasn't really that bad of a push though, because it just worked for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is what Fedora's pretty much always done, so it kind of makes sense that it happens again with KDE as well. It's a little bit before it's ready. Like, even if the true showstoppers are done, there's still going to be those extra things like um, yeah. multi-window apps being a bit uh, being a bit rough. There's going to be some portals that still... Uh, multi-window apps where there's just no way to place... Uh, for the client to place where they want the winners to be. Um, <laughs> so they just go they wherever the compositor feels like they want to... I don't know what um, Plasma's rules are for that, but I would imagine just stacks them on top of each other. Um, yeah, so that's as with most things in KDE, it's customizable, right? Mm -hmm. But by default, windows are placed in the center, and if windows would be overlapping completely, they get cascaded sort of down to the right a right. little bit. Right. So like if you opened up, um, I mean, it's not going to remember for sure. If you opened so up GIMP at multi-window mode, for example, so it would just like yes. find a spot. I imagine that's a little bit weird. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was meaning by multi-window apps being a bit weird. I understand what you mean, yeah. In GIMP's particular case, that's an easy fix because you just put it into single window mode and then everything works just yeah. fine. Yeah. But yeah, and you have to do that or your distro has to be forward thinking enough to realize that's a problem and then do it for you. Yeah. Um, although there was a recent uh, Wayland Protocols issue that was trying to address this. It was mainly a problem with things like scientific apps where they don't have that extra recovery feature. Um, right. And, you know, depending on what you're using, it could... It could try to tile them. It could just put them on top of each other. It's like a really inconsistent experience depending on which compositor you're using. And that's yeah. just not ex what the user would expect.